guys, it's Megan, and in today's video, I'll be showing you a few ways to repurpose your old school supplies. We've all seen the DIY school supplies videos that come out this time of year, or at least they used to. I haven't really seen many lately, which I mean, it makes sense because there's really only so many ways to decorate a notebook. So I thought it would be kind of cool to like show you guys how you can use school supplies for things other than school. I used supplies that I had left over from previous school years, but this is the kind of stuff that always goes on sale this time of year. So without further ado, let's just get into it. The first project I made was this jewelry storage binder. For this project, you'll need a three ring binder, trading card or photo pockets, and some self-adhesive Velcro dots. I got these ones at the dollar store. Start by decorating your binder however you want. I made mine using my Cricut and colored in a few parts of the design by hand, but you can also design a cover on your computer and print it out, or you could draw the whole design by hand. I made one for bracelets and another one for necklaces. Now for the inside of the binder. This is seriously so easy. All you have to do is put one pair of the Velcro dots at the top of each pocket. This will make sure that your jewelry doesn't fall out while you're turning the pages, but still keeps it easy to access when you need it. I use trading card pockets to organize my bracelets and photo pockets to organize my larger necklaces. I was kind of worried that the Velcro dots wouldn't stick, but surprisingly they stuck to the plastic really well. If you don't have self-adhesive Velcro, you could always glue on some of the normal kind. You would just have to wait for it to dry before you can use it. I've never really been able to find a good way to store bracelets. I've always kept them in a drawer, which is a mess, and I would never wear them because I could never find anything. I tried using like those, um, like the paper towel roll type ones. I don't know what they're called. I'll put a picture, but I always thought that they were annoying because if you want a bracelet that's in the middle, you would have to take all the other ones off to like get to it. But with this method, I can easily flip through and see everything that I have. Granted, this is definitely not all of my jewelry. I just ran out of Velcro dots. Also, I used a one inch binder because that's what I had, but if you're gonna buy a new one for this project, I definitely recommend a larger one. But here's how the finished binders turned out. Like I said before, I'm obsessed with these and I think that it makes it so much easier to find what I need. The next thing I made was this iPad stand. For this project, I used a clipboard, wood craft cubes, popsicle sticks, a picture frame, a hot glue gun, sandpaper, and paint. First, I placed my iPad on the clipboard so I could decide where I wanted the wood blocks. I ended up using six wood blocks on either side, and I left a space in the middle to put a charging cable. Mark off where the wood blocks are with a pencil, then attach them with a hot glue gun. I put glue on the bottom and on one side of each block so that they would be stuck to the clipboard and to each other. These wood blocks were kind of uneven, so I attempted to hide that using two popsicle sticks on each side. I just lined them up, made a mark at the end, and cut off the excess. I sanded down the edges of the popsicle sticks, then glued them to the front of the wood blocks. Repeat this on the other side. The popsicle sticks will create a little bit of a ledge so your iPad doesn't fall off. You can decorate this however you'd like. I covered part of my clipboard with some painter's tape going in a diagonal line. And at this point, my cat Marty decided that I was focusing way too much on this clipboard. So we took a break, then sanded down the handle and the part of the clipboard that was showing. This part is optional, but it should help the paint stick better. I went outside and covered my clipboard with some gold spray paint and let that dry overnight. The next morning, I used some white acrylic paint to add interest to the bottom half. And when that dried, I covered the parts that I painted with some polyurethane. This is totally optional. I just wanted to be 100% sure that the paint wasn't gonna rub off. I peeled off the tape, then removed the back of this eight x 10 picture frame. I glued the back of the picture frame to the back of the clipboard with some E6000 glue. And that was it. So here's how it turned out. This is perfect if your tablet case doesn't turn into a stand. You could also leave off the wood blocks and just use the clipboard part. Or you could glue other things onto the clipboard like a pen holder or some cork board or something. This next idea is super simple, and that is to organize your cords using binder clips. I found that the medium sized clips work the best for this. There's really not much to it. You can just use the binder clip by itself, or you could label it if you want. I cut labels from some vinyl with my Cricut, but you could also add tape to the end and write the label on by hand. Or you could try using paint or paint pens. Before, I was organizing my cords with rubber bands, which got kind of annoying because every time I'd go to use the cord, I would set the rubber band somewhere, and I'd be lucky if I didn't find it in the litter box a few days later. Um, yeah, gross, but true. This way, I can keep the clip on the cord the whole time, and hopefully my cats won't try to steal it. Another super easy project is to turn an old pencil case into a ring holder. For this project, you'll need a plastic pencil box, some felt, a piece of cardstock or thin cardboard, and a hot glue gun. Start by cutting a piece of cardstock to fit inside your pencil box. I just traced the bottom, 
then cut out a rectangle that was a little bit smaller. Make sure that fits. Then cut a piece of felt that's about as wide as your paper. Start rolling up the felt, using hot glue to hold it in place. Once the felt roll is as big as you want, use a little more glue to secure the end, then cut off the excess. Repeat this until you have enough rolls of felt to cover the whole piece of cardstock. When you've made enough, glue the felt onto the cardstock. You can glue this directly into your pencil box, but I use double-sided tape instead. That way, I can just take this part out if I ever want it to be a pencil box again. Add in some rings or earrings, and that's it! I think I should have made the rolls of felt a little bit bigger, but otherwise this was the perfect storage solution for my wire rings. This last project is something that I've been wanting to test out for a while, making wax seals. Since this is a school supply video, I made my wax seals from some old crayons. Besides that, you'll need some hot glue sticks, parchment paper, and a way to melt everything. I used a glass bowl and this mini pancake maker from Walmart. And finally, you'll need something to stamp into the wax, like an enamel pin or some jewelry. Cover your work surface with parchment paper, then melt the hot glue and the crayons together. I used two mini hot glue sticks and one crayon. Cut the glue stick into small pieces and break apart the crayon so everything melts easier. I melted my wax by putting a glass bowl on top of a mini pancake maker, um, just cause that's what I had, but you can also use a wax warmer or you can heat this in the microwave. I found that it took about four minutes for everything to melt in the microwave, but I'd recommend heating it a minute or two at a time and checking it. The only problem I had with the microwave method is that you'd have to do the whole project in the kitchen since the wax cools pretty fast and you might have to reheat it a few times. Either way, once the wax is melted, go ahead and drop it onto the parchment paper. You can put this directly on your project, but I like this method because it's no big deal if you mess it up, you can just remelt the wax and try again. Then place something on top of the wax. I used these charms that I originally bought to make those like Martha Calvo necklaces, which spoiler alert still never happened, but they ended up being perfect for this project. When the wax cools, go ahead and remove the charm, and that's it. I learned that some charms definitely worked better than others, so you might have to experiment with it a little bit. But overall, I was super happy with these. If you're using a glass bowl, I definitely recommend picking up a cheap one from the dollar store or cleaning out a glass jar from like salsa or something because this isn't really the easiest thing to clean. I found that the best way was to remove as much wax as possible with a paper towel while the bowl's still hot, then to hand wash it. I also made these purple ones, but I thought they looked a little bit too dark, so I fixed that by filling them in with some metallic silver paint. I applied the paint with a q-tip, honestly just because I was too lazy to wash a paintbrush, then I dabbed off the excess with a paper towel. This gave them a lot more dimension, and it just looked a lot better in my opinion. When you actually want to use your wax seals, all you have to do is glue them onto your project. Of course, the most popular way to use these is for sealing envelopes but they're also great for wrapping gifts or adding little embellishments to just about any project like this jar. You could also use them in art journal pages or to decorate bookmarks. So that was everything for this video. Make sure to let me know which project was your favorite. I think mine was the jewelry binders. Also, before anyone comes for me, I know some people don't like the way that I say the word crayon. They say to say it like crayon? Like, I don't, that does not sound natural to me. I'm sorry. But anyways, thank you guys so, so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more videos just like this one. My merch, my website, and all of my social media will be linked down below. I love you guys so, so much, and I will see you guys later. Bye!